Hi and welcome to this third Um Al Giri pattern from the Firefold series on my website. You can also find a playlist on YouTube. It's getting more complicated, so coloured pens are involved and a second compass. I'll explain that a little later. So here you can see the single rectangle tracing and then this the double triangle tracing i used these for paintings but i want to show you what i did in the video which was to create the weave and oh my goodness it really hurt my head because when you reflect this notice that the weave has to be continuous so you can't just reflect the weave you have to do the opposite on its mirror reflection so this one's going horizontally across the intersection this one's going vertically so just be mighty aware of that really important to trace the lines but do the opposite of the intersections i really hope that makes sense well here is the outcome of this particular video i haven't even painted it yet i'm just waiting to see the inspiration hit me and so i can do something decent with it this is a previous one I've done, the circular tiling. It's really grand and beautiful, so um, I hope you enjoy the circular. And then, something a little bit different, the rectangular tracing. You can see how small it is, but totally bold colours. Um, really enjoyable. So whatever you end up doing with colour, um, with or without weave, I really hope you enjoy it. Be ready to be challenged. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so in this video, I'm starting with a circle already divided into 10. And as the construction gets a little bit more complicated, I'm going to use a few different things to aid the um, construction. One, for accuracy, and two, so that you can see clearly what's going on. So the smaller compass, in addition to this compass, to help me get the small circles I'm after, I will also use coloured pens so that you can distinguish uh, certain intersections. So that should help. And third and finally, I'm going to number the points around the circle. So one through to ten to kind of identify certain lines. So we'll begin with our fivefold rectangle. We need to divide this corner and this corner into five equal angles. <laughs> equal angles, <laughs> sorry, equal angles even. So connect one to eight, but then stop on the vertical side of the rectangle to do six to three. And then join these two to get our dividing lines, checking that it'll go through the centre. And now I can put in one to seven, but stop at the dividing line. One to five. So in addition to the fivefold rectangle, the one that's in this orientation, we're going to draw another one that's in a slightly different orientation. Notice how the 5 to 8 line and the 10 to 3 line both hit the 7 to 2 line there and there. We also need another pair of lines, so not a complete fivefold rectangle, but we need 9 going to 2. And we need seven going to four. And notice these two lines also hit two other intersections. So take advantage of that as a way of lining them up. And now we're going to draw in our original or our first of three proportioning circles. So it's the same circle as we've done before. So centered on one and it's going to hit one, two, uh, three three four points and then another four points here so lots of checking and making sure it does the job before you commit to drawing and if they don't hit all eight points try to get the best fit you can for this drawing and improve it for the next and now our second circle is going to hit one two and three points and the same here so that same principle trying to get your best fit 90% checking hovering 
hoping and then 10% uh, is the draw and the third and final circle is going to hit three points one two and three and then the same down here okay so my next pair of lines are parallel to one another and quite wide apart so they're starting at the top in the middle circles and then they're going to hit the outer circle and then they're going to hit this outer circle so three points to line up and take advantage of the parallelness and slide your ruler along making sure it's clean it doesn't leave smudge marks now we're going to do a vertical pair of lines and if we start in this top corner it's going to go inner middle outer and then it's going to hit this point down here so four points to line up and it's parallel to an existing line so see if you can take advantage of that so start on the inner circle and go all the way down and then here is inner middle outer if they didn't have this point to kind of balance it and anchor it you could just use these three together really incorrectly so that's why I wanted to have extra lines in position because we're not doing it by computer a vertical line on paper may not be exactly vertical the same way as digitally a pair of lines that are parallel to the seven to two line and they're going to hit one two three six points it's good to line up the outermost ones so it's going to hit this point on the outside of the rectangle and it's going to hit the inner circle there so put them put it in position and then you can check that it is going to do the job in the other places so inner middle outer circle one intersection here with that vertical line and one intersection here with the eight to three line and if you're happy with it draw the whole thing in and then do the same on this side so line up the outer two points and then you can check everything's okay in the middle if one of them is out don't worry too much because then the others will then help you identify that rogue point is a narrower um, channel pair of parallel lines and it's either side of the eight to three line so put your ruler against it get your eye used to that angle and then if you pull it downwards that line that we just drew the purple one purple one where it hits the um, edge of the rectangle that's one of the points and then you've got one and two very close to it so bear those in mind but these two down here there's a tiny kite and it's hitting two of those very close together so one two three and then four and five so get the best position you can stand up if you need to and then draw it in and it goes all the way so it was hitting one two three four five and then i'm going to slide my ruler up and find the other point oh look it's the kind of the same width as my red like ruler so I can really use that parallel quality. Okay, so it's hitting one, two, three, four. I counted five, but I said four. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five. This width we're going to repeat, and it's going to be on the diagonal either side of the nine to four line. So again, get your eye trained and we're going to use the outer most points, which is this one and this one, but then it's going to hit an awful lot along the way. So I always line up with the outer ones and then check. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, amazing. And then do the same on this side. So lining up those two and checking one, two three four five Ooh, i think it's a little bit not quite hitting there and let's see now these are our lines for the time being we're going to start picking out the pattern and then we're going to add an additional circle in these two positions and then complete the drawing. 
okay so you could do this on tracing paper and then lift off your tracing paper leaving it attached on one side and then continue add your circles and then flip it back down and continue um, I'm going to draw it in a slightly thicker 0.8 millimeter pen and actually before I do that can I just identify two beautiful little things that have occurred so there's a lovely five pointed star it should be regular she says and it's just a byproduct of all of those things hitting but it's not really part of the final pattern so a lot of things kind of reach the five pointed star but don't go inside the five pointed star so the first pair of lines for example they're going to go on top of these purple lines and they start at the very edge and they stop when they hit the vertical and let's do that here which happens to be the inner corner of this five pointed star you don't have to circle them it's just pretty and now we're going to go on top of the vertical lines and stopping on the inner circle and then on top of an existing line picking out what we need on this green line so that we have the completed eight point eight pointed star ten pointed star the shumps are at the center just the quarter of it and then on top of the blue line but be careful of your gap it's the width of these two red lines and now this one I've always make a mistake with so it's gonna go out up here and then in up here now let's see going to go in and then it's going to go out it's really hard to see the shapes you've got going on but I think this middle uh, drum doubler shape and the two tarunges are coming together you can see a pentagon some more kites but these two they're going to be very beautiful I promise okay let's complete the drums and at least one of the pentagons And this is where I'm using my little circle. So let me pick out the center. So on that vertical line, the first intersection downwards, or the first intersection upwards, that's the center of the circle. And we need it to hit two places. So the outer circle, and then also this point where this five division line hits the nine to four line. And if you follow your eye along it you can find this point so these two lie on the same and then it's this so try to get the best measure of it centered and touching these two points okay and then when you're happy with it you can draw that circle in so if we finish off our shamsa it's going to go from the inner circle through the middle to the outer circle and carry on until it hits the new circle that we've just drawn so along that green line but we now know where it's going to stop so it just stops there do the same up here and then we're going to complete this corner by joining this to this and if you notice what it's parallel to oh it's parallel to this did i just change it oh no i didn't oh. so parallel to this joining these two and then we're going to come up this blue line but we're going to stop on the circle so come down from this blue line and stop on the circle and then lastly where the circle hits or where the vertical hits and then just to the edge there where it meets that red line And there we have it. I am going to add a little bit of colour so we can see the shapes and talk about them. Okay, so what I really love about this uh, pattern and how it's evolved from Um Al Giri number one is we've got a lot more shapes, full shapes, half shapes, quarter shapes involved. So there's many more, they're smaller, 
but also you start noticing things so if we look at just the white shapes they're mostly they are all in fact one of three shapes so either they're a full pentagon so the bunge cond or they're the drum shape so they're kind of lined up this way or they're the shamsa and then what's left in the other spaces are the turanj and then the surma dance and the surma dance they're on this two jaunty angles here but then here we've got a quarter one sort of lying flat and then a quarter one lying flat there so it's intriguing as to how it will tile so from this you can of course take the full rectangle and then using tracing paper reflect it to get the other half and then you've got one tile that you can repeat as you wish you can also take the triangular tracing and then reflect it to get the full uh, one-fifth of a pentagon and then tile it in a circular fashion okay now for the transfer and painting potentially I folded and taped my tracing paper to my construction making sure the fold lined up with the edge of the tile I then used the lines on the ruler and it's quite thick to draw a line either side of the pattern line because it's a quarter pattern this is very easy and sorry it's very difficult and very long and not easy to do systematically so lots of double checking till the very end and even then I don't think I caught everything until I was on to the next stage okay so I then slipped a plain piece of paper underneath the tracing so I could see what I'd drawn without the construction lines confusing the issue I then worked my way around the drawing and I erased each pair of lines or one pair of lines from each intersection to give the illusion that the channels were going under and over one another and again this is not easy to do systematically by taking advantage of the symmetry because it's not a full symmetrical drawing just yet so lots of checking and rechecking and singing the under over under over song to your heart's content um, and a lot of mistakes I have to admit I then folded the tracing paper on its fold so that I could trace the left hand side onto the right hand side but be aware if you are tracing a weave this isn't exactly going to work because the left hand side isn't a reflection of the right hand side each intersection on the left hand side must do the opposite of what it does on the right hand side it's a discovery I'd made only once I'd done the whole thing so just again be very careful okay once it's fully done I transfer to watercolor paper with a spoon and because of all that effort with the weave I outlined it with a, a ruler and a waterproof pen and the ruler helps you line a cut up across the whole drawing um, I haven't painted it yet I'm still waiting for the inspiration to hit um, I look forward to seeing what you get up to with this pattern and any version of it with or without the weave and um, enjoy good luck you'll need it <laughs> sorry Shh. <laughs>